So yeah, uh, I've actually been speaking at All Things Open for the past couple of years, uh, four years, I think. And then um, Open Source 101, I first spoke at the first virtual one and that wasn't intentional. We didn't know it was gonna be virtual and uh, been honored to, actually, I really enjoyed this event because I'm a big fan of getting people into open source and showing them the, the, the pathway. And uh, yeah, so this focus is gonna be around pull request. Uh, if you're familiar with the term, or if you haven't done any open source, uh, there's tons of content out there. Uh, I also have my Twitter handle on the bottom right of all the slides. So uh, I answer all DMs. So hit me up if you have any questions and uh, yeah, find me after. Cool, so uh, Javier covered a lot of this already. So I just wanted to keep this slide in because I just wanted to also reiterate that open source is very valuable for your career. Uh, it's valuable in companies and folks are doing it all over the globe. So, uh, and again, these, Slides, I'll probably tweet out my slides as well to folks who want to get access to this as well. Um, you can find it on my Twitter as well. All right, so my path to the open source, um, I guess I deleted the uh, the O in that. <laughs> um, but yeah, my path to the open source, uh, it actually started in 2013. Uh, I actually had an idea to start a Slack group. Actually, it was 2014, started a Slack group with friends and did not know how to do some basic Node.js server interactions like with WebSockets. And, um, I ended up discovering how to do it um, through Googling and then finding a GitHub repo. And this GitHub repo actually had a maintainer in it. Um, that's kind of how it works. And I emailed this maintainer directly and the maintainer responded back with like actual responses and, and answers to my questions. And at the time I didn't know how to use GitHub issues. I didn't know how to do pull requests. I was very, very new in the GitHub world, uh, but I knew how to copy and paste code like, like a boss basically. So, um, GitHub has been like the central location. I, I am a GitHub employee today, but I've been using GitHub for as long as I mentioned in 2013. And I, I just love how accessible all this is to everybody. Anybody who wants to get a part of open source or part of, of um, all these different libraries and tools to leverage. Um, it could either be GitHub. There's also other source code hosting platforms as well that are out there, but Google's your friend and uh, as well as I'm your friend and I'm a developer advocate at GitHub. I've been there for four years now, and my focus is actually just encouraging folks to use features you probably have not leveraged before, things like GitHub Actions, spent a lot of time in the last couple of years building a lot of content on that in particular. But uh, I just wanted to mention like the path in open source is a bit broken, and I, this is, it's mainly due to like we have that, this, that the cathedral and the bazaar, there's like so many different opportunities for you to introduce yourself into open source that it's not as clear where to start. And um, I, I spent a lot of time working on this little side project called Open Source. It's a community, we have a Discord as well. Uh, and what I found is that if you don't got sauce and you lost, uh, which is the quote from Gucci Mane, and it's also very similar to open source. Like if you don't know where to start, you kind of just you either avoid it or you sort of persevere and push through. And uh, what I'd like to do is actually continue to let people persevere, but also make it easier. So they'll have to struggle through what are the first steps to getting your PR reviewed. So a lot of folks want, want to contribute to open source uh, through the form of pull request, uh, which is actually requesting your code changes to the project, uh, which you do on any, any open source GitHub project today. Um, but I'm gonna walk through some practical steps and it's all gonna be high level. Uh, again, like if you wanna go into more detail, I'm happy to have longer conversations with, with folks who maybe need to Maybe you have projects you're interested, I can sort of show you the way. Um, but the very first step is, is essentially not what you would probably think uh, when it comes to finding code to contribute to. Uh, I actually re recommend talking to contributors and talking to maintainers and, and project maintainers specifically. Uh, and the reason for this is a lot of times we can open up pull requests or we can find a cool fix or we find a bug that might be associated with our expertise but it might not be needed at the time. And the best way to find out really quickly if like this code is actually needed, is actually having a conversation first. And I, I try to pursue anybody who's interested in and contributing to my projects. Uh, if you open up an issue, I automatically have a GitHub action that points you to our Discord. So we can have a discussion about the code that you're, you're trying to contribute. Because uh, a lot of times we'll get code that doesn't really fit in line with the roadmap that me and the other contributors have discussed or we're moving forward with. And a lot of that context is usually missed if you aren't involved in the community. So uh, almost every large open source project has a community around it. Some of the small up and coming ones, uh, the community starts when you join. So it, it could be one project you saw on Twitter or 
on our trending page. Uh, once you join, you can have to start having that conversation to kind of understand the future. And I've got countless stories, but I only have 10 minutes, so I can't really go into specific detail. But the goal here is really just building trust. Because a lot of times you'll you'll get contributors and you'll get issues open, but you don't really know who these folks are as a maintainer. Uh, and then it's the same deal on the reverse. Like you don't know where this project, where the vision or the roadmap is going. So just by saying hello uh, and popping into a Discord could be extremely helpful in your open source journey in your career. So op uh, if you go to discord.com slash open source, there's countless amount of projects that are now using their free tier for Discord. Uh, it's a really good introduction. If you're into Discord, uh, it's helpful. I understand uh, not every experience is, is similar for everybody, but Discord is a good first step. Uh, otherwise, you could also pop in the GitHub discussions as well. Um, my Discord, actually, what we do is we have this app that highlights good first issues. Uh, and we do this intentionally because a lot of folks, when they find new projects or, or things to work on, uh, they usually the complain is like there's no good first issues. There's nothing really to get started with. Uh, so I've created a bot. Uh, which you could actually install onto any GitHub app and anybody in open source, uh, which is a project to find your next open source contribution, uh, will, they'll be notified to make contribution to specific projects. So uh, if you have an open source repo and, and you want some attention or some uh, help and some good first issues, feel free to install the app. Uh, everything's open source, so feel free to look at the code and contribute back to that if you'd like. Uh, but I did want to also mention things like GitHub discussions. GitHub discussions is a... And I, I, I realize the irony that I haven't actually shown any pull request yet, and this is intentional, because a pull request should be the last resort of, of finally getting something merged. Um, so in this case, we actually had a discussion about an idea for uh, a PR lender, because uh, we were getting, during Hacktoberfest, we get a lot of contributions or a lot of requests for contributions. And it's, it's hard to basically push people in the right direction, especially when the the, the amount of pull requests that are open is kind of intense. Uh, and mind you, open source is a small project where like at this point, 600 stars, which is not a great metric to understand how big it is, but 66 contributors is a better number. Um, so we're a smaller project in the, the grand scheme of things, but we do get a bit of attention every time. Like I do like a talk like this. So Matt, who's actually based out in, uh, in Raleigh, uh, where, where all things open, it actually happens. Um, he opened up a discussion. We talked about what would be like the bare minimum for a contribution. Like what are the things we're looking for and like what makes a good pull request? Uh, and we, we already had all these rules and regulations on how to get your contribution uh, contributed. And we, we put all that into the contributing that MD. Now, a lot of times this is all static markdown. You can read through it. You'll find out how to set up your repo or how to contribute or how to grab an issue. Uh, but what we wanted to do is actually make this more dynamic. So that way, if you're a potential open source contributor, we can sort of grab your hand and guide you through the process. And the way we did that is through Matt's GitHub action, which is called PR Compliance Action. Uh, it's a very compliance-like title. Um, but the real goal here is just take everything in our contributing MD and all the goals and the rules and the regulations and put it into a GitHub action to sort of guide the contributor into an experience that is going to be successful. So um, I have a couple PRs. I'll finally show some PRs, but I've got some PRs that we that come that come through the project. And this is an example of a really good PR. Uh, and the best part about this PR is the description. Now in all my projects, uh, I have a PR template. Uh, so as a maintainer, I just give you sort of the breadcrumbs to basically fill in the blanks. Step one is like if you if you don't fill in the blanks, it's really hard for me to want to like pursue reviewing this and give you really constructive feedback. So if there's clearly missing pieces that you missed in the description, uh, I always end up pushing it back. And then this is usually when I kick people back to the Discord. So we can have a conversation that's not in record inside of GitHub, but rather we can have a conversation like DMs or in a public chat ch uh, channel inside of Discord. But this description provides a lot of context. Uh, the context that I provided, and I, I Based on time, I took out this slide, but uh, I, I follow the form of SQA, which is situation, complication, question, and answer. If you could follow all those steps inside your description, it makes it easier for someone to understand what you did and why you did it. Uh, and then we can come to a resolution of like, okay, this is code going to be sustainable. Can we merge this in? Uh, this is an example of a PR that was submitted to the GitHub CLI. Now, there's a lot of context and a lot of uh, knowledge that gets thrown around in large projects like the CLI. And uh, this is the description that was provided there. So a lot of times as 
experienced maintainers, we don't really lead with our, our best foot. Like we can have a one line change or this description block can be blank. And uh, my recommendation is for all contributors, including maintainers, is to provide a good amount of context. So that way, anybody who's walking through or who contributed to this project can provide quality review, but also we can confirm that this could be quality code that could be sustainable and live in perpetuity for the project. The other thing is like when we cut releases for the project, a lot of this context inside of PRs, they get attached to releases. So if there's ever a bug down the road and someone goes and tries to figure out what broke or what changed, uh, this is what they're being met with. Uh, no release notes and no description in the PR. So my recommendation is always try to provide as much context as possible. Uh, and the best thing you could do, even when you're stuck on something or you had to punt on things like writing tests, mention that in the PR. Because uh, a lot of times you get free mentorship from open source maintainers when you do most of the work, but need help on the last the last mile. So be okay with like explaining that, okay, I didn't finish the entire thing. Uh, please unblock me on this one situation. Some other things that we do in the, the PR's compliance action is uh, we actually identify if someone has linked an issue. So a lot of times the big thing in, in Hacktoberfest, and I, I clearly state this in, in the contributing guide as well, is that no PR gets merged without an issue. So even if you create the PR after, like first, I do push you to actually create an issue. And the reason for that is because the way our automation works is that all issues get attached to PRs, all PRs get attached to releases, and our releases generate our change log. So if one of those steps are broken, anybody who's contributed in this project in the last six years since the project's been around, that's now one piece of the puzzle when someone will not know how to contribute to because that all that information is missing. Uh, the other thing is um, you could also do some, um, uh, what I'm trying to say, these little special codes uh, where you could do closes or fixes issue number. Uh, and then I automatically close the issue when the PR is merged. Uh, this is all documented in my contributing guide as well. So if you're interested, we also have some blog posts up on our Dev2 organization. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about that, again, I can't really go into extreme detail on all this, but at the end of the day, I, I put in a bunch of automation through GitHub Actions specifically uh, to help first time contributors. I've seen a lot of contributors from all over the world come through open source, find that their first contribution through open source like was met with some um, feedback and some help. Uh, so we try to help people pull them along and teach them how to do a good first issue or a good first contribution uh, through the PR compliance action. And it's intentional. Open source is a very approachable project. It's a JavaScript app built in React. And uh, if you know one of those two things, or if you're familiar, or if you're willing to, to learn, like we're willing to teach you. Uh, so, and that part of that teaching you is actually getting pushback. So if you have any sort of red flags in your CI, uh, we can then coach you on how to fix that or how to improve that. So at the end of the day, if you want to get your PR reviewed, uh, it, it's about providing value. So if you can provide enough value in your description, provide, provide uh, enough value by reading the contribution guidelines or joining the community, uh, you'll be very successful in open source. So uh, I appreciate your time. I'm very quick. Again, I mentioned that uh, I'm available on Twitter and the Discord. Uh, please find me. And uh, Todd, thank you so much for the opportunity. And everybody enjoy the rest of the, the keynotes and the sessions.